What are the compensatory systems for uh, acid-base changes? Tell me. Lungs. Okay, lungs. so very good. Lungs and kidneys are the main ones. Lungs are able to um, compensate very fast, but not fully. Okay, and they're compensating what ABB disorders? Metabolic disorders, okay? In contrast to that, uh, kidneys are compensating respiratory disorders, but not only, watch out, they're able to compensate other metabolic disorders as well, okay? That's the difference. And also, uh, kidneys have two speeds. One is very slow at the beginning, so basically, if someone has a disorder, the pH is going to be way out in the four... Uh, first four or three days but later on uh, they get boosted up rebuilt and they they can fully compensate the the pH so basically out of this in in terms of uh, comp compensation and how the pH is right now you can tell if the change was uh, happen like acutely or chronically because you check the disorder it's gonna be for example it's going to be respiratory acidosis, and if the if the pH is going to be way out, you can uh, suppose that it happened in the first three days. But if the final pH is going to be almost normalized, you know it's chronic, and the kidneys are able now to compensate it. Okay. Yep. So basically, as we had had the formula, if you check the blood gases and PCO2 is going to be high. And then bicarb is going to be not so high. So the pH, like a compensation, then the pH is going to be low. Okay. And you would assume this happened uh, uh, like acutely. But if PCO2 is going to be high, again, because of uh, COPD or whatever. Okay. So COPD. Then... And if the bicarb is going to be really higher, that means the kidneys are already trying to compensate this, this acid with this base. And the pH won't be so high. Or it could be even normal. But then it won't be as changed. It won't be so away from normal. You can say it's a chronic disorder. Okay? So it's been there for a while and kidneys had time to compensate that of course the presumption is that the kidneys have to be fine working fine okay but and this is what you're going to do in seminars but but that you get the the idea okay so and uh, one more important comment on respiratory acidosis and i'm stressing this all the time so basically if you're going to have someone with copd COPD means I have an obstruction. What do you count under COPD? Tell me, what diseases? It's hard for you to know, maybe now, but everyone's going to ask you this, especially during internal medicine exams and everything. So what do you count under COPD? Bronchitis. Yes, so chronic bronchitis. Very good. So that's the main one. Chronic bronchitis chronic bronchitis what else there are and uh, by the way uh, and this is this is uh, aside emphysema where does it uh, belongs to obstructive diseases a COPD or restrictive diseases what do you think well where, where does it belong emphysema What do you think? 
So all of you from today, please remember it, it belongs under COPD emphysema, okay? And uh, the thing you sh it's a bit different, but the thing you should remember, if this is a alveolus and, and you got emphysema, there's a distraction of the septa and, and the, the alveolus looks like this. So it's more like uh, less elastic. It's like, or in a way it's too, it's, uh, everything is in a way s straighten up. Okay. Everything is, it, 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 it's, it's, it expanded, but it's not as, it doesn't recalls anymore. Okay. So it's, it's a different idea than uh, restrictive disease okay but and, and the point is uh, okay this is fine but remember also th this gets like straighted up the the ligaments in emphysema get straighted up and they get straighted up so much that they overstretch and then they lose their recoil and an obstruction over here happens so okay so emphysema emph emphysema also rather belongs under COPD it belongs to obstructive lung diseases okay and you put it here emphysema under COPD uh, and still you can put here bronchiectasis bronchiectasis Okay, so these three, one, two, three, they all belong under COPD, okay? And still there's one acute disease with obstructive uh, problems. What do you call that? What do you call the one? It's not chronic, it's acute. And why do we don't put it under chronic, under COPD? You put it extra. What is the disease? What do you call that? Many of you have it. What is that? <laughs> what? Asthma. Very good. Asthma. Asthma. And what's the difference between these two? It's acute. But there's a big difference in terms of, uh, in a way, reactiveness to, uh, to drugs and whatever. Because if you have COPD, you should imagine that the bronchi are collapsed or ob ob obstructed continuously. Okay? Okay. But in asthma, the people have obstruction or at least at the in the beginning or at, when, when the disease starts and in the first years, they have obstruction only during attacks. But if, if they are on drugs and whatever and fully compensated, there 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 is no obstruction. So basically they their 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 spirometry uh, evaluation is can be fully normal. Okay, so that's a big difference. That's why you put it aside. Although it's an obstructive problem as well. In meantime, between attacks and uh, and uh, and if, if they're fully compensated, they have no problems at all. Okay, in contrast to COPD, which is it stays there, and there's there's full obstruct. But why I'm talking about COPD is pH. So if you're having COPD, but the same is with restrictive disease, you're going to have also respiratory acidosis because uh, they all are hypoventilating and that's the 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 main thing hypoventilating so also restrictive diseases doesn't matter or whatever the causes there's one important thing and i want all you to remember that in case someone has a chronic uh, problem with respirative acidosis what happens and we talked about there's increased H plus okay and what happens well as we talked about cells they buffer the H plus as well so H plus gets you are acidic for a long time and this this basically accounts for for any 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 acidosis but the kidneys have to be fine okay and they have to work. So if, if you have any kind of acidosis, which is not generated in, in kidneys, what happens is the K plus is pushed out of the cells. Okay. And that means at the beginning of the acidosis, you're having 
hyperkalemia, okay? So there's a hyperkalemia. But to any hyperkalemia, aldosterone reacts as well. So uh, later on, the kidneys will be started and they will get rid of potassium, okay? So you, were, you will pee out potassium and meanwhile, the K plus will normalize, okay? It's gonna normalize after several weeks. Well, and what is now so dangerous? Very dangerous is if someone comes to you with a chronic respiratory acidosis, for example, so with COPD, and you check their blood and you will see they're acidic, their pH is low. You won't ever normalize it fast, remember. And this accounts with, I mean, with, uh, in general, everything, like, uh, of course, yeah. If there are some fast changes in the body, you can change them back pretty fast. But if there is something chronic, never do that. Because what could you do in this scenario? What could happen? So, I am chronically acidic. I had a temporal uh, hyperkalemia, but I peed out the potassium, so now I have normal kalemia. And now someone's going to correct my acidosis very fast. What will happen? Well, the thing which will happen is if you normalize this acidosis or acidemia, in total, this person has decreased levels of potassium. So, when, when, you, when you, if you'll do it fast and normalize it, then will, you can cause a severe hypokalemia. Because when you normalize the H+, the potassium will get into the cells back and, 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 and you can kill the patient with hypokalemia. Okay? Yeah? So remember this, never normalize uh, any changes of pH if they're chronic. Really do it slowly because you can, you can kill them with uh, ion shifts of whatever ions, but you are afraid mainly of potassium, okay? So we went, uh, we talked a bit about uh, COPD and asthma and difference, okay? And also what you should not do. Good, so, so that was COPD. Um, respiratory acidosis or hypoventilation okay so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell and as always check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials